Let's get started. Oh, no, I'm uh, good. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here, oh God. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to look into your word together, oh God, and lighten our hearts and eyes, minds, and understanding. Draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we are again going to go back into the Word of God to look at the Word of God. We can't ever get too much of the Word of God. Uh, it says, feed me till I want no more. I don't, I don't take a whole lot of feeding till I want no more. We have to digest it in, in spots, but we always should keep a hunger for the Word of God. So let's go, let's start. We want to talk today about trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations. Let's start in uh, John 16 and verse 33. John 16 and verse 33. I see Shirley just connected in. Uh, trials and tribulations. Uh, I say John 16, yeah. verse 33. Start right there. Uh, well, let's start. I'll, I'll read this. Uh, start at, we're going to start at verse uh, 31. Uh, again, hello, Shirley. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Jesus answered them, do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We know that Christ here was talking about, he was approaching the time for him to go to the cross. And he was informing the disciples about it so that they would be prepared for it. Uh, I found that God always, God never leaves us in the dark. Uh, he always will speak to us. Sometimes we may miss him or miss his voice. But that's not because God has not spoken. It's because we missed it. Uh, he wanted his disciples to know what was going to take place. He knew what was going to take place. And he wanted us, he wanted them to know. And so he said, these things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. Now, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. He said, but in me, you'll have peace. Uh, he said, you're going to be scattered. Y'all going to, y'all, it's going to be some trauma. He said, and you're going to leave me alone, but yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. And we walking in the footsteps of Christ, so there are going to be times in our life when it looks like we are all alone. We're devoid of human uh, associations and friendships or whatever. But then we're still like Christ. We're not alone because God is with us. Jesus said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world, looking at trials and tribulation, trials and tribulation. Jesus said, in the world, you're going to have them. Uh, we don't escape that. There are some things we cannot escape. It, it's just, it's inescapable. We're going to endure them. So the best thing we can do is be prepared for it. Be prepared for it. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, I mean, 1 Corinthians, 7, the 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe it's 10 and 13. 10 and 13, and we are looking, and we're looking always relating it to what we're going through now and what we see on the horizon for the church, and it's getting worse, it's going to get bad, uh, but, but we can stand, and, and we need to be prepared for it. Uh, you got that 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 13. He said, there had no temptation had taken temptation. You. You, you. You can read it. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common unto man. Okay, now, God is right here. He's letting us know that you're not going to go through something that's unusual. You're not going to go through something that nobody else has had to go through. 
You, God's not going to put us in a position where we've got to, I know sometimes we may feel like we're going through something. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody understand. Ain't nobody see what I'm suffering. Ain't nobody see what I'm going through. But there have been, there have been many people that have gone through. There are going to be many, there have been many people that have gone through what you've gone through. Many times I've seen this in my own life, especially uh, in ministry. A lot of times God will allow me to go through things and endure trials and go through situations because he knows there's somebody coming behind me that I'm going to need to encourage. And you can't, I can't tell you about what to do when you, when you, when you ain't got no food if I ain't never been without no food. Amen. I can't tell you about what to do to trust God when, uh, to pay your bills and everything if I haven't been, if I haven't been in that situation. Amen. Uh, you've got to be able to, to, to identify with people in order to have uh, empathy with people. I think that's one of the problems we had with the president that we had. He's had all his life. Mm -hmm. with, it, you, you don't understand people struggling. You don't understand what, 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 what the poor man is going through uh, or what pe how people are affected by your decisions if you've never been there. And we, we find that in Christ. He said in Hebrews uh, what is that? Hebrews uh, 4 and 15. We, we, I think we said that, talked about that last time. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings yes. of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. So Jesus, that's what Christ did. He came and put on a body. He came as a man so that he would... Endure the things that we had to go through. He would face the temptations that we had to, that we have that we have to take, have to face. He he came that he might endure. That he might know you can't you can't really talk to me if you never had to do nothing. You've never been through nothing, then you can't talk to me about nothing. I'm not listening to you because you don't know what you're talking about. So this is what Christ did. So he knows what it means. The Bible says in that he himself had suffered being tempted. He's able to secure or help those that are tempted. Because he knows what it means to be lonely. He knows what it means to endure persecution. He knows what it means to be talked yes. about and call the devil and, and and somebody said call everything but a son but the son but a son but a, but a son of child God, of God, a child of God. He knows all about that. So he understands. And so he's not gonna allow us to be tempted above that, first Corinthians ten and thirteen. He's not gonna allow us to be tempted above that. We are able. Now, what you're able to do and what you're willing to do, want to do, is, is two different things. Yes. Nobody want to go through trials. I don't want to go through trials. But these are things that are beyond us, and God suffers these things. God allows these things because your trials are what make you. You don't learn anything about God on the mountaintop. Let me say that again. You don't learn anything about God on the mountaintop. Yes. On the mountaintop, you bless. On the mountaintop, you enjoy. On the mountaintop, you 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 reaping. On the mountaintop, you shout. You don't learn nothing Ooh. on the mountaintop. We like to be on the mountaintop, but you don't learn nothing on the mountaintop. What you learn, you learn in the valley. You learn in, in trouble and trial. That's why the scripture yes. even says, the scripture says, Solomon says, sorrow is better than laughter. That's what Solomon said. He says, he says, sorrow is better than laughter because by sorrow the heart is made wiser. You learn from the things you suffer. You learn from the things you endure. You learn from the things you go through. And so your trials are what make you. You show me a child. That, that 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 has had everything given to them, has had everything handed to them, has had everything uh, uh, just 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 put up put before. I'll show you somebody that's lazy. Amen. I'll show you somebody that's spoiled. Don't know how to endure and go through nothing. But that child that's had to get out there and scrap and scrape, that's had to suffer, that's had to share, that's had, even yeah, my son's school teacher years ago, he told us, uh, and y'all wouldn't even married. He said, if you're going to get married, he said, don't have one child. Don't have, because all that child going to do is be selfish. They know everything is supposed to be coming to them. Uh, it, when you come up with a, in a family of more than one, they have to learn to share. 
They have to learn how to get along. They have to learn that everything ain't going to go their way. And, 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 and that travels over into the church. A lot of times in, in the church house, some people act as if the pastor and pastor's wife. They got one child. They want all the attention. Mm -hmm. They want all, but well, everybody needs some attention. Everybody needs uh, some encouragement. Everybody needs the word of God and, and, and an hour of counseling or something every now and then. So we have to learn how to live as the body of Christ. There are no temptation taken you, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. We're moving on. There are no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not what suffer will you to be tempted. You to be tempted above that ye are able. If you in it, you can win it. But will hold with it. the if you temptation. In it, hold it. If you in it, you can win it. Yes. Because if you weren't able to win it, God wouldn't allow you to be put in it. Did you hear that? Yes. If you in it, then that means you can win it. Because God would not allow you to be put into something that you can't endure. Something that's beyond you. As I said once before, the will of God will never lead you where the grace of God can't keep you. The will of God will never lead you, never allow you to be put into anything that the grace of God can't keep you. We all know the testimony of Job and how he suffered greatly. God wasn't worried about that because God knew that he was able to keep him. He told Satan, he in yes. your hand. Yes. Just don't kill him. Just don't touch his flesh. And, 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 and Satan took everything he had. Job stood. Why? Because God was with him. Jesus said, yet I'm not alone. See, all Satan saw was, was Job. He didn't see the grace of God and the, and, and the help of God. And then when he fell in, in, in taking everything he had, his skin for skin, all a man had will he give for his life. Yeah. God said, you, you, you touch him, but you can't take his life. And he smote him with sickness, trials and tribulation. And Job still stood. Mm -hmm. And he came out in the end better. The Bible said, after you suffer a while, he's able to strengthen, settle, and establish you. Mm -hmm. So we got to go through our trials. Our trials are what make us. Let's look. Uh, let's, let's look at this. We're just going to follow the Lord. Give me Acts. Acts 14 and verse 22. Acts 14 and verse 22. Trials and, and tribulation. What is a trial? A trial is, a, a trial is when you're testing something out. You got something new. You got a new car. You got a new cell phone. Or you got a new whatever. You, you, you want to put it through, through, through the paces to see if it's going to stand up, to see if it's going to work. That's what our trials are. Our trials are to test us. The Bible says the trial of your faith, work it patience. We'll get into that later on. But we have to go through our trials. And, yes. and really when I stop and look at it and start thinking about it, we ain't really going through no tribulation. Tribulation <laughs> means great suffering. <laughs> tribulation is great suffering. Tribulation is great trouble. <laughs> We got some, I and mean, we call it tribulation, but I, let me say it like this. In comparison to what the early saints had to go through. Okay. The Bible said we have them resisted under blood, yet striving against sin. Ain't nobody put a gun against no. up to your head or a knife to your know. throat. Said if you don't denounce Christ, I'm going to split your throat. We ain't none of us got home and saw, saw a padlock on our house that the government then took it over. We ain't got a place to stay. See, we ain't went through those things yet, but the Bible says the early, early church, the early saints, they had to go, they, they lived in dens and in caves of the mountain. They, had, they were in uh, sheepskin and goatskins. See, we, we ain't really went through it yet. It's going, it, but, but now hold on, because it's coming. It's coming. We, 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 tri trial is coming. Thank God he allowed us to go through the little bit of things first. Well, we ain't going to want to pay my bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I ain't got to eat what I want to eat. You got a refrigerator full of food, but <laughs> I'm suffering. I'm going through because I ain't got no steak. Yeah. I don't. I don't want no chicken. <laughs> and the other saints would have been yeah. glad to get whatever they could have got. Chicken every day. Yeah, chicken in the morning, chicken in the noon day, chicken yeah. when the sun go down. Uh, but you know, we ain't we ain't went through yet, but. I'm not going to discount your trials because we've just been blessed to that, to that degree. But we have to prepare ourselves 
for what's to come, because what's to come is going to be worse. Yes. All right, what verse did I, what did I say? I said Acts 14, 14 and 22. 22. What did it say? Confirming the souls of the disciples. Confir now, this was the early church. Confirming the souls of the disciples. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must through much tribulation. And that we must, mm. must, through much tribulation. Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. So, we all got a cross to bear. Yes. And your cross would not be a cross if it wasn't hard. Did, did you hear me? Your cross wouldn't be a cross if it wasn't hard. I, somebody said, well, Pastor Moore, you're going to have to hold this cell phone. I can hold it with no problem. All day long, flip it around in my hand. This ain't no problem. Yeah. But now you asked me to hold something else. Something heavier. All day long. All right, now this is a trial. Now, now this is a test. So God allow your trial to be something that's difficult. And what one person's trial is may not be somebody else's trial. Amen. Are you Sister Moore? If you... He asked her to go all day without eating. I think I heard her just say a while ago, she was questioning whether she ate anything. All day long. So, hey, ask her to go a day without food. It may not be nothing. You had Pastor Moore to go through without, all day without. So, oh, that's a trial now. <laughs> I can do it, but I ain't going to be wondering about whether or not I ate. I'm going to know I ain't I'm going to know I ain't ate. I'm going to know. <laughs> What I ate, what, what, they might know what time I ate. Everybody don't have the same trial. So that's why it's not good to compare yourself to anybody else. God tailor makes your trial for you. Mm -hmm. The trial of your faith work and patience. Yes. Whatever you need in your life, God is, whatever virtue you need in your life, God is going to tailor make that trial to produce that in you. If you need long suffering, God's going to put some people in your path that you're not going to be able to, to dominate, that's going to make you have to suffer long. You have to learn how, oh, well, well I just I can't do nothing. My boss, ain't, he ain't bending. That's to produce long suffering. If you need patience, God going to put some things in your path that's going to cause you to have to wait. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Ain't nothing you can do about it. See, God, our trials are what makes us. If you if you if you low on love, God gonna put some people in your path that's gonna make you. Re and then you got you gotta love them. Come on. Oh, that mercy. Yeah. Well, that yeah. that's that that's to produce some love in you. See, our trials are to make us like Christ. Yes. Let me say that again. That's that. That's the whole point of trials. Our trials are not to just make you suffer. Oh, God don't get no glory out of you suffering. But our trials come to make us, to mold us more like Christ. You, you, you probably remember in, eight, in the 18th chapter of, 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 of uh, Jeremiah, when Jeremiah went down to the potter's house. Uh -huh. And the potter worked the work, the work on the wheel. And it was the Bible says that the, the, the clay was marred. The vessel was marred in the hand of the potter. And so he made it again into another vessel. And the Lord said to Jeremiah, cannot I do with you as the potter did to the clay? Yeah. It's to make us. Whatever you, now if you're going to be a pastor, you're going to be a leader, you got to go through a lot. You have to know what it means to struggle, to go through, because it's easy to, to kind of like the president. He told those people, he said, I'm going to be with you. When he got ready to yeah, send them to the yeah. Capitol. He, he, he told them, right? He told them in the meeting, I'm going to be, don't worry, I'm going to be with you. They went to the Capitol and protest and broke in and everything, and some of them getting charged and everything. That man was somewhere else looking at TV. <laughs> it's easy to send somebody else in charge. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to stand behind everybody. Fight. It's easy to do that. Yeah. They falling in front of you. But now a true, a true leader will not send his troop in front of him. He'll go in front of them. That's what Christ did to lead by example. So if you're going to be a leader, you got to go through a lot of things so that you will know what you're talking about when you try to encourage other people. You'll know what it means mm -hmm. to endure. You'll know what it means, what they enduring and going through. That's why you can then turn around and tell them with, with conviction, you can make it. Yes. 
You can make it. You can make it. You can go through this thing. You can yeah. go through this trial. You can smile even though you want to cry. Our trials are what make us. Oh, say, so what were we at? He said, through much tribulation, we'll yeah. enter into the kingdom of God. Through much tribulation. Mm -hmm. Those tri the tribulation, oh, I feel this now. The tribulation yeah. is it will, will, will cleanse you. It will knock off all the rust. It will knock off all the impurities. It will knock off all the shortcomings. That's what our trials do. They trim us up. It makes us. Jesus said, every tree that bears fruit, he purges it, mm -hmm. that it may bring forth more fruit. When a man, when a farmer has a tree, a fruit tree, that's bearing fruit, say it's a peach tree, it may have bore fruit last year. But now, if he wants that tree to bear more fruit, he got to before... Uh, barren season, cut it back, prune it, mm -hmm. cut off the old, so that it can produce new, and then it'll produce more fruit. Jesus said, every tree that bears fruit, he purges. He gonna cut some things off. Sometimes he cut people off. Yes. Sometimes people become our hinder, and sometimes God will separate you from those people that are not gonna be productive oh, in your goodness. life. Yeah. I've had to do it. I saw a brother in the church, an older brother, years ago. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. But I, I discerned that when I was around him, he, he was he was negative. He was pulling me down. I never said one word to him. I just separated myself. Everybody can't be in your circle. Yeah. Everybody can't be in your group. Some people will pull from you. You want somebody that's going to push you, not somebody that's going to hold you back. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go to uh, James. James, we're talking about trials and tribulation. James 1 and 1. Trials, tribulation. They good for you. They don't, you don't like it, but it's good for you. You got children growing up. Don't go feed them all the time when they're hungry. Y'all, y'all. That, that's called tough love, yeah. Uh, <laughs> If you feed them all the time, they ain't gonna develop into nothing. They gonna look to you. You 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 putting them, you becoming a crutch to them. Amen. Amen. Let them go hungry. They'll get out and find some food. Oh, I love them. Wow, well, you can love them. But that don't mean you gotta feed them. Did it kill you to go a meal without without a meal? Huh? Y'all. <laughs> Did it hurt? Did it kill you? But they don't know I love them. They don't know you love them. But it's going to produce that, 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 I call it survival instincts. It's going to kick in. See, when you were going through and nobody was there and you were crying, what happened? You got tired of crying. Ain't nobody going to come help me. Ain't nobody, gonna, nobody care about me. I got to get up and get something for myself. Amen. Wasn't that good for you? Y'all... <laughs> Amen. Wasn't it good Amen. for you? Now you don't depend on nobody. Well, the same thing for them. Amen. If they're in the dark, they ain't going to kill them. Get a candle. <laughs> well, see, y'all, y'all. <laughs> see, this is this, this is it's called tough love. And, yes, and, and mothers, I, yes, I know, is. mothers had that tender heart love. I, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to do my baby like that. Okay, well, yes, see, okay, when they get when they get old, they still gonna be your baby. You gonna you gonna be tired of them yeah. babies. <laughs> sure, <to> smile. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It ain't gonna kill them, cause later on you you gonna now let's look let's look at it let's look at it the anatomy of su of suffering. If you baby them all they like, then when you get older and you need somebody to help you, they can't help you. They can't help you. They still looking to you. If you broke and I'm broke, we can't help nobody. It's the truth. It's the truth. But if I learned it, and I, I didn't learn I learned this the hard way. I ain't giving out all my money. My, one of my daughters would tell me, oh, daddy, I always got money. You got it right, right. <laughs> <laughs> daddy, I always got money. But I learned not to, I learned that when it's gone, everybody looking at me. <laughs> And all, and ain't, and ain't, ain't, ain't nobody really probably accepting your excuse. Y'all know, ain't, ain't nobody looking at that. They, you, but you got to come up with some money. So I learned, okay, well, well when I got money, I'm, I ain't going to spend it all. 
I tell my kids when they were growing up, I said, I'm trying to feel you, not thrill you. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't try, I'm trying to feel you. I ain't trying to thrill you. You might not get what you want to eat, but you're going to have something to eat. And Shirley, I'm looking at her now. Shirley, Shirley got smart even as smitten by three or four years old. Shirley knew daddy going to go, when we go to work, he's going to go look in the cabinet. I'm going to tell on you. Yeah, daddy going to go look in the cabinet and see if any food in there. If, any, if it was canned goods in there, he ain't going to buy nothing. So Shirley, three or four years old, Shirley, Shirley lunches. Shirley went and put all them canned goods under her bed. <laughs> and I went and looked, and I went and looked in the cabinet and didn't see no canned goods. So I had, I went, had to go buy some food. Later on, one day I was in her room looking under the bed, all them canned goods under the bed. <laughs> Shirley, Shirley played the game. <laughs> Tired of eating. She tired of eating king, but see, as long as you got something to eat, I'm trying to feel you. I ain't trying to thrill you. And sometimes I believe God is doing that. Yes. Lord, I've been praying for this car for the longest. Amen. Lord, I need you. know I need. Are you rolling? Yeah. Okay, what you need a car for? Okay. <laughs> Amen. It, uh, y'all, come on. Amen. You got a habit eating bean, bean, bean. I'm going to turn into a bean. Are you, know, hey, you eating? You get David said, I young, once was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the rice forsaken, nor a seed begging. You got some bread? You got something to eat? We ate, we ate corn dogs without the dogs. That's cornbread with mustard. Yeah, ain't no dog. Ain't no corn dog. So, see, you, you learn your thing you suffer creates and make you. All right, let's go to James. James 1 and 1. You can make it. He said, he said, you leave me alone, but yet I'm not alone. Because God is with you. James, what? James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. A servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad. Greetings. 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 My brethren, count it all joy. My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptation. When your trials, because see, it, 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 it all the, your trials, it, a, a lot depends on how you approach a thing. Do you hear me? A lot depends on how you approach it. Look at your trials as an opportunity for God to prove himself. Yes. For you to prove yourself to God, that God, I'm going to be faithful in spite of. Not to, not to dread. I'm not saying you're going to like them. But the way you approach a thing. He, James said, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Now that's right opposite of what our flesh we feel like doing. Amen. But that's the way you counter. A, that's the way you turn a stumbling block into a stepping stone. Did you hear me? That's how you turn a stumbling, what was meant for you to stumble on, you turn it into a stepping stone. Okay, your trial come. All right, it's hurting you. What did, what did it do? It knock it to your knees. Mm -hmm. All right, well, this is a good time to pray. Amen. <laughs> I can't go to sleep at night. All right, this is a time we're going to study the Word. Yes. Ain't got no food. Okay, well, we're going to fast. Amen. See, you turn your stumbling blocks in the stepping stones. Count it all joy. You ain't got no friends around. Okay, this is a time for me to learn how to trust and be by myself. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> for real. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Divers mean many different. Sometimes it seems like everything's happening. Trials at home, trials on the job, kids acting up, wife acting up, husband acting up, relatives acting up. Count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptations. What did he say? Knowing, Knowing this, this. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now let me say something for uh, something uh, for the Lord. I'm talking I'm preaching. I'm talking for the Lord. You're not gonna move God through through tears. Move that, 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 that don't move God. You cry big old alligator tears. That ain't that don't move. <laughs> that don't move God. God see you crying. And don't nobody love me. <laughs> don't nobody care. <laughs> that don't move God. 
So, so God allows our trials because it's going to make us. He's the, he, he knows us. He knows us intimately. So he's not going to allow you to go through too much, but the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now look at that. He didn't say the trying of your faith will produce what you believe in God for. He said the trying of your faith will work patience. Because God ain't going to all the time just come like that. He can. Sometimes he will. But sometimes he won't. You pray and it look like it don't come. You pray and it don't come. You pray and it don't come. I decreed. I did this myself. I, pr I prayed and decreed. And, you know, the Bible said, I shall decree a thing and it shall be. I decreed and everything. And, you know, sometimes you just got to wait on God and know that he's not, he's going to be there. Amen. I had a time when I had a bill years ago. My kids were, I don't think I only had two kids at that time. And we was work, I was working and selling insurance, and, and I needed some money to pay the rent. And I'd already made the money, but the, but the people were slow on sending it. And the rent people, rent, rent became due, and I'm praying and everything. I just got tired of it. Look, Lord, I, I, I ain't nobody going to set us out. The money going to come on time, and everything going to be all right. I left it alone. The last day of the month, the money came. <laughs> and the people on the, at, at the place never tried, never evicted or nothing. So sometimes the trying of your faith will work patience. I'm just going to wait on God. Yes. And the Bible Jesus said, in your patience, possess ye your souls. God knows what he's going to do. We don't. But we got to have faith in it. And our faith produces patience. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, work in patience. What did it say? But let patience have her perfect work. But let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire. That let patience have her perfect work. That you may be, see, pay, what is it, let, let what patience? Or let but faith. let patience have, have her, her perfect, perfect work. work. Okay, let, let it, God let it work on you for a while. I mean like cake. Mm. Uh -huh. I'm like cake. You like cake? Like Everybody like cake? Yes, <laughs> what kind of cake you like, Susan? Chocolate. Chocolate. What kind of cake you like, Susan? I like chocolate cake. Huh? Different kinds. Different, different <laughs> kinds. Oh, sure, what like kind that. you like? And all, uh, everybody else that's tuned in. All of us have our preferences. My point is this. You make cake up. Okay, in the bowl, I know as a little child, we I sit up, stood around my mama making, 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 making the cake. And I was waiting for her to give me either the little turning thing oh, or give me the bowl. We gonna give, I'm gonna get if I, if I got the, the, the mixing things or either I got the bowl, somebody else got the and I was thinking to myself, man, I'd be glad when I get old, I'm gonna just make me a cake and eat all of it. I ain't gonna cook it. I'm just gonna like, cause, cause look like cause look like she was trying to get all the batter out of it. I'm, I'm sitting there waiting and she like she's scraping it up. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe thinking to myself, look, you trying to get get all of it out of there. <laughs> And I got old, and I've been on my own for over 40 years. I ain't never did that. But now when you make cake, it ain't ready, is it? No. No. It ain't ready. You got to put it in the stove. Right. You preheat the stove. And then you put it in there, and then what you got to do? You got to wait. You got to wait. You can't keep going, opening the door, closing the door. No. The cake going to fall. Yes, <laughs> I don't care how good it starts smelling in the house and how much you ready to eat. You got to wait until the cake get ready. It might look like it's ready on the outside. You take a toothpick or something, stick it in there and see if something come out on it. It ain't ready. So I, the same way with us. Sometimes we get in the, in the furnace of affliction. We get in the furnace of tribulation. We get in the furnace of trials. And look like God ain't ever going to take us out. Well, when are you going to take me out of this? I'm tired. I didn't pray. I didn't learn my lesson. Yes. <laughs> yes. See, uh, and I, I can testify about that too. Don't, can't nobody teach you like God. If you stubborn and don't want to learn, that God can put you in something. Yeah, I, ain't I ain't taking you out of it till you learn. My brother told me that he, he went through something and he told the Lord, he said, Lord, I done learned. Lord, I'm through. Uh, Lord, Lord told him that, no, you ain't through. You just want to stop the pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
See, God knows everything. Yes. So let patience have her perfect work. When you come out, you're going to come out on time. So God ain't going to let you stay in too long. It might be too long for you. You might not want to stay in. But he ain't going to let you stay in too long. You take the stake out too, too, too fast, what happened? It's still bleeding. And, and it's, now somebody may like blood. I don't like blood. Any of my food I still bleeding. Done. If my food's still bleeding, it ain't ready to eat yet. You got to wait till you cut it and don't nothing come out but juice. Okay, now I'm ready. So God don't want us, God don't want flesh showing. When God get through, people can cut you and ain't no blood going to come out. You ain't, gonna, ain't no flesh going to come out. You're going to be well done. Let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire. What did it say? Wanting nothing. What did it say? If any of you like wisdom, now if any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God. Uh huh. That giveth to all men liberally. That giveth to all men liberally. And upbraideth not. Upbraideth, which means God don't argue. God is not gonna fuss at you because you want wisdom. Well, I don't want to. You know, we can always go to God for instruction. We can always go. The Bible says, "All our ways acknowledge Him; He'll direct our path." Mm -hmm. So we, and that's wisdom. To, to seek God, not just jump out on, on your own and do something. Mm -hmm. Lord, I want you to guide me. I want you to direct me. Yes. All right, what did it say? But let him ask in faith. And it shall be given thee, given him. Uh-huh, what did it say? But let him ask, ask in, in faith. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of, a, of the sea. Driven with the wind and Driven tossed. with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything. For let not that man think he shall he receive anything of the Lord. Give me, give me verse twelve. I'm trying to move. I don't want to read. Blessed be, blessed is the man that endured temptation. Okay, now, now, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When For you can go, is. when you can go through your trial and you come out, yes. oh, that's good. When you when you make God happy, Ooh. make God smile. Yeah, he went. Don't you know, Job? God, 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 God was really pleased with Job. He took him through all that stuff, and Job still he said, "Lord, give it to the Lord, take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All the days of my point of time, I'm gonna wait till my change come." He went through until God decided, "All right, it's time for you to leave him alone." He went through, and the Bible said God gave him double for his trouble. Everything yeah. that Job had in the beginning, you go back and look at it, from the first chapter of Job to the, the last chapter of Job, everything he had, God gave him double. And gave him all, gave him the same amount of children back again. He didn't give him the same wife. Come on, read. <laughs> or when he is tried. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he, he shall, shall receive the, the crown, crown of life. life. When we stand before God, the Lord said, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear God say. Yes. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over me. When he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Read what it is. Which say. the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Uh huh. Let no man say now, when he is tempted. Let no man say when he is I'm tempted. I'm tempted of God. I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. So, cause God can't be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. See, God's never gonna put evil in your path. Satan does that. Now, God may allow Satan to put evil in your path, but God's never going to do that. But God will test you. The Bible says about how God tested Abraham. He told Abraham, Abraham was, what, almost 100 years old before he had a child. And then when Isaac did come, the Lord said, I want you to take Isaac to the mountain. And I want you to kill him and offer him for a sacrifice. Now, he would waited almost 100 years for this child. And now God's telling him, I want you to take him and sacrifice him as a burnt offering to me. And Abraham did. He took, see, our life belonged to God. Is that right? Amen. We're bought with a price. Amen. 
So God told Abraham, you take him and offer him for a burnt sacrifice. He took him, up on, going up to the mountain. Uh, the Bible said, uh, Isaac said, Father, I see the lamb. I see the lamb. He said, I see the wood, brother. I, I, see, the, I see the fire. But where the lamb for the burnt sacrifice? Abraham said, God's going to provide himself a lamb. And when they got to the top of the meeting, when they got, when they got to the top of the mountain, Abraham got ready to kill his son. The thing stopped. That's okay. The pre-zoom meeting has ended. That's okay. Okay. When, when they got to the top of the mountain, Abraham got ready to slay his son. And the Bible says that God, the angel, called to him out of hell. Abraham, Abraham, stay your hand. For now I know that thou fearest God. Yes. Seeing thou hast not withheld thine only son from me. Sometimes God want to see how long you're going to endure. Want to see if you're going to go through. Going to see if you're going to make the sacrifice. Our trials. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Yes. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Our trials come to make us strong. Let's get another scripture. We don't off Zoom, but that's okay. Let's get uh, 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 1 Peter 4 and 1. 1 Peter 4 and 1. See, this is the way God looks at it in Christ. See, he gave, we, we, we glory and thank God and shout and rejoice because Christ gave his life for us, right? Okay, now God may require you, may call upon you to sacrifice your life for Christ. That's not asking too much. He died for us. He's not asking too much for us to die for him. Or to sacrifice or go through for him. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, in the arm flesh. Arm yourself likewise. Arm yourself likewise. With the same mind. He, with the same mind. Arm for yourself. He that had suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, now let me jump. Uh, Give me verse 12. Verse. 12. Yeah, same chapter. Beloved, uh -huh. think it not strange. All right, now, beloved, think it not strange. Concerning the fiery trial. Concern, concerning the fiery trial. Which it is to try you. Don't think it strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened. As though some you. strange thing has happened unto you. But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ. But rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ. Suffering. Christ, Christ is suffering. That he is glory. That when his glory shall, shall be, be revealed, revealed. Ye may be glad you may also be glad. with exceeding joy. All right. Now, just imagine. You standing before the Lord. We see the nails in his hand. We see, we, we see the, the print of the nails in his hand. We see the print of the nails in his feet. The pure side. Lord, I thank you. And the Lord turned around and said, I, I see what you went through. I'm pleased with you. That you may be a partaker of the yes. suffering of Christ. We used to sing a song years ago when I was a little boy in the Baptist church. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. He said, no, there is a cross for everybody. And there is a cross for me. So we can bear our cross with joy. Let's, let's go back to that and I'm going to close right there. James 1, I think in verse 2. My brethren. My brethren. And count sisters, it all joy. Count it all joy. When you fall into a dive of temptation. Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. 
I want I want I want to know what he felt like when he had to be left alone. So that's why sometimes we had to be left alone. I want to know what it felt like to suffer when I've done nothing but good. Yes. That's walking in the footsteps of Christ. Yes. That's being just like Jesus. That's being made just like Jesus. So this is what our trials come to. We can understand him. He already, he, he's already taken on us and taken on our position so that he could understand us. Now it's time for us to take on his position that we might understand him and understand the great love that he's had for us. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work your patience. It's going to be greater later. It's going to be better later on. Sometimes it's just time to go through. But whatever it is, Jesus said, yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. He said, lo, I'm with you always. Even when you don't see it. I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. <coughs> and so that's why we just walk in faith and walk with God. I'm through. Anybody got anything to say? I think I've been with kind of long, didn't I? No. No, you didn't. Anybody got anything to say? Sister Tiana? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Well, who you? Sound like a message for you. It was. It's going, it's going to be all right. Bible says weeping may do it for the night. He said, joy come in the morning. Sometimes sometime I may look back at things, I look back, may look back at things that I went through and laugh about it. And laugh in then. But you can laugh about it. And just imagine when we get to heaven. The Bible says, I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not even worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So all we got to do is keep on walking with the Lord. And everything's going to be all right. I'm sorry.